Hi, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Now there's lots of videos and I've done some videos on bridging finance and how you buy properties, you add value to them and then you get out of them. Um, but although there's lots of videos on the bridging side, um, there's not many videos on the exit side. How do you get out of it? Um, generally they're done via buy to let remortgage, but there are some rules around that, when you can do it, how much you can raise out of it, some of the rules you have to consider, and some of the issues around some such deals. So I thought I'd put a little video together um, and break down some of this stuff hopefully you'll enjoy it let me know what you think guys in in the comment section and I'll catch you on the video thank you so much take care hi everybody it's Pi I'm here from niche advice I thought we'll talk about exiting out of bridging finance okay um, I've done lots of videos on bridging finance, auction finance, and getting into sort of deals uh, and what you can do. But this time, we're going to talk about how you get out of this deal, right? So if it's a sales strategy, so you're going to buy it on a bridge, do it up and sell it, pretty straightforward. Um, and that's a, that's a simple enough uh, exit strategy. But what happens if you want to keep that property? So you want to buy the property, add value to it, but actually keep it within your portfolio. Um, there are a number of rules around that. Okay, so let's just say you buy a property for 200K. You spend 50K on it, and you now think it's worth 300,000 um, pounds. It really comes down to uh, your experience and also what you've done to the property. A lot of the calls that I get from people is they've bought a property maybe in an auction or they've bought a property um, off the market and now they're saying, well, I bought it last month, I bought it for 200, it's really worth 280. Can I do it on a remortgage on a 280? The simple answer is generally no, okay? Um, because you haven't really added a lot of value to it. You've done nothing to it. You've just probably put a new kitchen in there, new bathroom, lick of paint, and you think it's worth you know, 50K more, 30K more. Well, it doesn't work like that. A lot of the lenders will tend to work off the price that you paid for it originally, okay? So that's really important. Um, the second point is there are some lenders that will say, okay, you bought it uh, within six months, so you want to refinance it. We'll give you a buy-to-let deal. We'll give you it at the price that you paid for it, plus the works that you did. So if you can prove all the receipts and bits and pieces that you've done, say you spent £20,000 on it or £50,000 or whatever it is, they'll give you the purchase price plus the money that you spent for the works, okay? Now, there are some lenders that will say, look, if you've genuinely added values, added bedrooms, you know, changed the titles, you know, all, all sorts of things, then they could look at lending it on open market value, okay? They seem to be a little more picky around that, okay? So you've just got to bear that in mind. And you've got to make sure that, basically, that the, the pricing's not going to be as competitive, okay? So one thing to consider is, do you wait six months? Is the pricing... You know, bearing in mind, generally a lot of people at the moment, because of the rental calculation and how things work, they're putting their exit strategies on a buy to let, maybe on a five year fix. So, do you want to be stuck on a five year fix, not necessarily on a great deal, uh, because you couldn't wait two months, maybe? Okay? So, sometimes it actually makes sense to say, look, yes, at the moment, bridging is expensive, but is it worth you sitting on that bridge for a couple of months more? Because once it's over six months, we've got a lot more lenders, pool of lenders to go at because they will allow you to do, raise the capital on open market value, okay? So that's option one, you can think about it. Option two is, can you do with the works, uh, the, the cost of the works, as well as you know what you paid for it? Um, or do you definitely need to pull out the money now, you need to pay people back or whatever it is, and we've got lenders to do that, but like I said, a lot of them want to see that you've added uh, a lot of values around that. Um, we have actually just seen a, a launch of a really today, a, a very good product that used to be around for a while. It's a light, light refurbishment product. It's a light refurbishment product. What that means is you buy the property on a bridge with the same lender. Um, they're going up to 65% loan to value, okay? But at the same time, the application is actually for a buy-to-let mortgage as well. Okay, so you get the light refurbishment product as well as bridging finance at the same time. The bridging finance, uh, sorry, the light refurbishment product, which is all type of a bridge, uh, as well as the buy to let mortgage agreed at the same time. And the beauty of that is, although the bridge is at 65% loan to value, the buy to let can be 75% uh, 75% loan to value post of all the works. So basically, it could be on a higher value. Okay, as long as you get it at the same time, there's going to be one application form uh, for the for the two offers. So essentially, you're doing two things at the same time, and um, that gives clients reassurance. One of the biggest issues that you get 
from clients is sometimes they will say, look, I don't want to be stuck on bridge. What happens? And I get calls all the time where they've tried to get deals done directly, maybe by the lenders, and they're stuck on this bridge. So this helps you because you've almost got the reassurance of getting a buy-to-let exit strategy planned at the start. So it's a very good product, well, very well priced, a bit quirky lender in terms of uh, the lender can be quite picky, so it's not going to be right for everybody. Um, you're going to need a, a level of experience to deal with this lender, but the pricing is generally very, very good. And these are type of the products that are available. So there's lots of different products around exit. Um, uh, I'm doing another deal at the moment. Uh, property has been developed. Uh, it's been converted into four self self-contained uh, flats uh, on one title. So the titles haven't been split. We've got lenders that will take the charge of the whole thing. Okay, so they'll take the whole lot rather than having to uh, refinance individual flats. Um, they'll do the whole lot. And that's really important because um, a lot of lenders have got exposure limits. You know, if you've, if you've got a block of four, five, six, they may only take one in the block. So you, you're having to do refinancing all of these deals everywhere where we've got lenders that will take the whole block. So everything's really depending on the deal, depending on yourself, depending on what your strategy is. But um, there are some really good products uh, popping up now um, with reasonably decent loan to values. Uh, and certainly on the buy to let side of things, you know, generally 75% is where it's at. Um, you've got to bear in mind that for professional landlords, and generally they see professional landlords or portfolio landlords of four or more properties, there is extra stringent checking of the portfolio. So it's not just about refinancing this deal, they will look at your portfolio, see how that's performing, see the loan to values behind the portfolio. So uh, uh, got to take consideration on that. It's it, Like I said, it's very easy to get into a bridge, much harder to get out of it. So it's best you speak to a professional brokers uh, and try to get, get their guidance from the start, really. Uh, often, too often, I get deals that have come to me um, where someone's on a bridge and then they're rushing around trying to get an exit strategy sorted out. So I hope you found this useful, guys, and do get in touch if you need anything. Take care. All the best. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.